So if you want to follow along with us, just uh, take a note of where you're at now in terms of where, what your body's like. You got some agitation, what your breathing's like, where the tensions are, perhaps even if there's like a subtle headache or anything like that, and a bit of uh, fidgetiness, and recognize, maybe even look at it almost like as if a number, if you get to the point where your window of tolerance has been exceeded, maybe that's at like an eight or a nine for you in terms of the distress within your body. And hopefully we wanna to try to start to be able to recognize what the symptoms are when you're triggered like that. Is there like a, uh, a flushed feeling to your face or more tension in your hands? Because we know that when the window of tolerance is triggered, it's part of your body having that fight or flight reaction. There's some chemicals associated with that. So there's gonna be some physiological response. It'll usually change the heart rate and your breathing for sure. Other people notice various, various different things for whoever they are. If they've got some old injury that typically flares up, there might be aching in that spot in the back or the neck. There might be a certain kind of headache. There might be a uh, heat or a coolness in the hands. Some people might have a partner point out to them that their ears go red. And uh, once this has been pointed out to them, they can start to feel the heat in the ears. When we can start to recognize those symptoms, then we know what our point is that we need to mark and target to then do a de-escalation. I'm going to explain a de-escalation strategy that you can do in public without people knowing, and I'll get you to follow along with me. But to begin with, explaining it might look a bit funny and take a bit longer, but as you get practice at it, you'll be able to do it so that it's just doing like a stretch with your eyes closed for a second and then sitting still and taking some deeper breaths and no one will really notice. To begin with, if I stretch like that, if you want to do it with me, and take a deep breath, oh, just hold, take it right in and hold it for three and uh, then slowly release over three. The square breathing, doesn't matter whether it's mouth or nose, but in for three, holding and raising the chest and then releasing for three leaving the lungs empty for three. Breathing in again for three. That square breathing with the uh, tendency to raise the chest so that we're getting enough air, that's getting the right amount of air. That's the volume of air and the amount of time we hold it for that gives us more oxygenation in our blood and more relaxation and that in turn then slows down the heart rate. As we're doing these things, I'm tensing up those muscles and releasing. I'm doing a short, shortcut version of progressive muscle relaxation. You can't really do progressive muscle relaxation in the doctor's surgery where you might be going like this and then releasing, but I can do a yawn stretch. So as I'm sitting there continuing to take deep breaths, I imagine my body's made out of sandbags. It's sinking into the chair and relaxing, settling into place. With each in and out breath, I'm letting the body settle in even further getting deeper into that relaxation. One of the things I do when I do a yawn stretch is uh, while my eyes are closed, I look up to my eyebrows, if you wanna try that now, and I try to look right up into my brain and I release it again. That actually gives my eyes that heavy feeling like when you're going to sleep or when you're first waking up. When I release it now, I feel my eyes are heavier, just like the rest of my body, I'm starting to try to bring in that sense of uh, uh, relaxation and heaviness throughout the body that we have 120 billion nerve cells throughout the body. So this forced relaxation of the body reflects into the lesser amount, only 100 billion nerve cells in the brain. As I'm doing this, even with my eyes open, I can then go into a visualization, which you would have done some before. And it's a bit of a, a misdemeanor to call it a visualization because you don't actually visualize stuff. I'm just telling myself in my head what it would look like, sound like, taste like, and smell like from the perspective of all five senses to be in a calming, relaxing situation that I like. You want it to be something that's not too exciting and something that you would enjoy for yourself. It could be for me paddling out to one of the islands in the basin. That might be a bit uh, unsettling for you. So you might choose walking through the bush or along a beach and you can change it up on each occasion. As I do those things, I might imagine the sun on my back, the warmth throughout, the shreds throughout my body as you're exercising, the shifting weight on myself as I move along. 
the uh, the feeling of the air blowing past, the breeze rustling the trees, maybe a, a gecko running off through the, the leaves. I noticed the things I would be seeing and how they would change as I take each step. How that, if I'm near the ocean, the smell and taste of the air that I would get. And uh, as I try to imagine that from the perspective of all five senses, whilst I'm trying to stay relaxed, I'm really occupying my conscious mind with this calming, uh, relaxing imagery and imaginations. It's activating the, the parts of the brain that uh, are active before and after we go to sleep and uh, putting me into a more relaxed state gradually through both the bodily and the mental processes. As I go along through that, you just want to be getting deeper on each occasion. And with practice of this, it'll get better, more helpful for you on each occasion. Because then we want to shift to say we can use a container exercise now, where it might be that these worries are just going to, are still going to be there behind this as you're doing this relaxation. You've got these intrusive thoughts, perhaps, or just the frustration of feeling vague itself. And as those thoughts come to mind, we accept that we can't stop thinking. That's a fundamental error. It causes problems every time. But what we can do is imagine taking those thoughts and literally putting them into a toolbox that we can come back to at a later time. When they're in there, we can imagine that we've addressed them. We know what they are. We're not ignoring them or locking them away. We're just saying that goes on the shelf, so to speak that I can deal with it later at an appropriate time. But right now, I'm going back to de-escalation and we go back to that imagining that safe space. You may uh, imagine then that as things are packed away, we're starting to look into where you want to go from here and what you want the rest of the day to look like. It might be starting to focus on so far today, I've got up and done X, Y, and Z. I really wanted to do A, B, and C, and now this has happened. If I just review my task list for a moment and where I'm at, maybe I can't do those A, B, and C because there's too much going on. If I do nothing, though, I know where this is going to lead. I'll stay in that vague feeling and that frustration with myself, and I'll get very little done. Perhaps I could do D, E, and F. And uh, that might be less likely to trigger me. And maybe it's a little slower and not getting the main A, B and C done. But I'm rolling forward on something. And I'm continuing to stay as much as is possible in the here and now. We want to find different ways of doing this. Today I've tried to give you a generalised framework of relaxing the body. Taking the deep slow breaths. Imagining being in a safe space. Containing those thoughts and getting back to being where you're wanting to go in life. <clears throat> I've done that in a generalized way so that we can shift that up on each occasion. If I make up one specific meditation for you where we're talking about walking on the beach, it's going to get boring. We need this to be something that you can customize on each occasion. So I hope as you listen to this, you can start to formulate a few ideas for yourself, practice it up, because we want to be able to do this on multiple times throughout the day. In your past, in your working career, even as a builder, you came to work and you made a plan for what you were doing that day. You might have picked up the parts on the way and you started to think in your head what you were going to get done that day. In your lunch break, you sat down with the lads and you talk about where they're up to and where you're up to. You're more or less having a meeting with yourself about where you're going next. You did that in your other workplaces where you reviewed your notes and the jobs on the screen and figured out what you're doing next. Now in our personal life, to manage this situation, We've got to sort something else out similarly to go when we're, we're losing it and, and stepping out of time with ourselves. Find a way to bring ourselves down, review what we've done and where we want to go and what we can achieve and keep going.